Hey guys, it's Vans, and um, today I'll be making a video response to a article I read on the internet. Turns out um, there's somewhat of a hubbub about uh, is Disney steampunk, where they just stealing steampunk and making it their own to make a buck. And uh, in the article itself, written by a steampunk scholar, I'll be linking his blog and his Twitter um, in the sidebar here. Um, he pretty much defends Disney in saying that there were always steampunk in their films. And I'm not going to uh, reinvent the wheel. So if you want to see how what kind of steamy movies Disney has done, go read the article. Um, but I want to posit that not just in films has Disney done steam, but the parks themselves. I want to start off with uh, Tomorrowland with its new makeover a couple of years ago, about like five years ago, they did a whole new Tomorrowland. And it's very steamy. The color palette is all brass and copper and exposed gears everywhere. Uh, the mechanicalness of, of the rides is there and you can see it, especially like in the in the spaceship ride. And I mean, you, got, you go there and it looks like steamy. Except, um, I know, I understand it's a little, you know, old school futurism. And, it, you know, it's not exactly very technologically new. But, I mean, it, you can get into it. Um, there's actual steamships at Disneyland. That's right. When was the last time you went on a steamship? I know the last time I went on one, it was on the paddle boat ride. It's great. It's an actual paddle boat that goes around a little pond. Yay! But, you know, nothing is more, literally more steamy than actual steam power. And it's a, there you go. You know, what can I say? It's a paddle boat. It's period. Um, Tarzan's Treehouse. Again, they did another makeover of a pre-existing, pre um, feature, ride, whatever, it used to be the Swiss Family Robinson treehouse. Again, Swiss Family Robinson, another uh, literary inspiration of steampunk. And and what I like about the treehouse is there's a lot of found objects, a lot of period objects repurposed to do something else, like a bicycle part of it is now um, part of a fan, you know, that kind of thing. I love it. It's nothing is worse than the steampunk in a practical manner than repurposing something else into something you need. Um, same same goes with the, the Indiana Jones uh, uh, queue, the the line before you get into the actual ride. There's a lot of stuff like that, repurposed um, a generator. Um, a lot of pulleys overhead. You can see the pulley, the actual pulley that's like powering up all the lights. It, it's you can see it over your head, and it's actually moving. And I know it's Indiana Jones is a lot more pulp than say steam, but I mean it gets the flavor of it, you know. And that's what you, that's all you really need. You just you see that like, that's that's kind of steamy, you know. I can see what they're going with with that. Um, it's great. Uh, another thing, I know that the next time I'm going to the park, I'm going to put on my goggles and I'm going to have a little uh, white duster coat and I'm going to go on Mr. Toad's Wild Ride and drive around like a, like a maniac and, you know, it'll be great. It'll be like I'm I'm driving my little putt-putt car and you know, it'll, be, it'll be fun, you know. It's like one of those, you know, the first cars and you're driving with the other, you know, exposed to... Uh, the drivers were exposed to the elements, and you know, it, it, it'd be it'd be fun. One of my favorite rides as a child was the submarine ride. Not just any submarine ride, but Captain Nemo's submarine ride. You got to ride in a little little mini Nautilus, and and um, drive around the bottom of the ocean. And you had an electric hull to the to deter any dangerous sea creatures that got too close. I mean, again, we're going back to 
the origins of steampunk and, and the literature of of Jules Verne and H.G. Wells. I mean, it's there, and but you know, nowadays the submarine ride is not what it is, what it used to be. Now it's it's still Nemo's submarine ride, but it's it's Finding Nemo, and it breaks my heart every time I I think, think about it. It's oh, man, and what were they thinking? I mean, but still, you can still go on and can you pretend? I did the last time I went. I pretended that I was in Captain Nemo's twenty thousand leagues under the sea ride. And damn. Um, lastly, there's a steam train at Disneyland that goes around the whole park. And all right, big deal. You can kind of use that as like a shortcut if you get too tired to walk. You can take the train. It'll stop. You know, at the next place, so you don't have to walk the whole way. But um, my favorite part about the train is it actually goes back in time to see the dinosaurs. And time traveling is a favorite trope of steampunk. I mean, either from, like, we have H.G. Wells in the time machine. And now they have, like, a steam-powered train, again, very period and very steamy in and of itself literally and it travels back in time I mean it's great you're combining fantasy and actual period objects and modes of conveyance and you marry them and that is one of the hallmarks of steampunk I love it and it's my one of my favorite things about Disneyland and I mean they did it before Back to the Future 3 time traveling train that's brilliant it, I mean we get to ride in your nice little car and do 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 watch the little dinosaurs to, and watch the end of the dinosaurs that's fantastic and uh, all to the soundtrack of chugga 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 I love it it's steampunk it's steamy and it's at Disneyland I, I don't see how they're, uh, I don't see what the nerd rage is all about. All that Disney is doing is going after that family entertainment dollar, which they've been doing since the 40s. And now they're, they're, they're naming what they're doing as steampunk when they've been doing it for almost, almost as long, you know, when, when in 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea came out like in the 60s, I believe. Um, I mean, they've been doing it just almost as long as uh, they've been doing Steampunk almost as long as they've been around. Um, I don't see what the why there's even a question. So, so they're putting the label of Steampunk on very limited items. I don't really see a problem with this. Um, you know what I want to see? I want to see the mouse ear hat, right? But with gears instead of mouse ears. Yeah, see? I'm, I'm sure you guys are, some, are, are want some too now, huh? Indeed, so... Bottom line is steampunk is getting more uh, popular and a little mainstream. Is that a bad thing? I don't know. It's exposing a lot more people to what we've loved forever and um we've just gotten to the point where people are now saying that hey this was my thing don't 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 take it away from me i want to be special i want to be a unique snowflake and you know what tough it's it's this is life and and it's a hallmark of a of, of subcultures everywhere you know it happened to goth it happened to rock punk anything that's that was underground has become popular it's gone we've gone through this phase and um but at least we can say that we were into it, into it before it was cool so uh this is bands and uh make sure to comment and sub subscribe etc talk to you guys later